O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. We read together from Psalm 119. We'll read from verse 153 down to the last verse, 176. O oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me according to the promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord, give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Princes have persecuted me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I was glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I ate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me from your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. God of mercy, shift to help us as our lips pour forth your praise. Fill our hearts with the peace you give to those who wait for your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Seven times a day will I praise you. Let's make sure that we at least match the psalmist and maybe exceed seven times a day. Let us praise him. Job chapter three. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. Job said, let the day perish on which I was born and the night that said a man child is conceived. Let that day be darkness. May God above not seek it out or light shine on it. Let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Let clouds settle upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. That night, let thick darkness seize it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Yes, let that night be barren. Let no joy joyful cry be heard in it. Let those who curse it, who curse the sea, those who are skilled to rouse up the Levitican. Let the stars of its dawn be dark. Let it hope for light but have none. May it not see the, the eyelids of the morning because it did not shut the doors of my mother's womb and hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth? Why come forth from the womb and expire? Or were there the knees to receive me or breasts for me to suck? Why were they there? Now I would be lying down and quiet. I would be asleep. Then I would be at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who rebuild ruins for themselves or with princes who have gold, who fill their houses with silver. Or why was I not buried like a stillborn child, or like an infant that never sees the light? There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at, their, at rest. There the prisoners are at ease together. They do not hear the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there, and the slaves are free from their masters. Why is light given to one in misery, and life to the bittering soul? 
who long for death, but it does not come, and who dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they find the grave. Why is life given to one who cannot see the way, whom God has fenced in? For my sighing comes like my bread, and my groanings are poured out like water. Truly the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. Job here in the depths of dis despair and depression, uh, lungs to have not been born. He says, however great you are, or however humble your life, in death you're all equal. That's a great truth in that, but we can sense in this the depression and darkness that Job goes through. People in the ancient world were like us. They suffered um, and sometimes were depressed and down. We watch this story develop and we will see how God restores and blesses Job later. But for now we feel his pain. And we read together. From the New Testament, Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. Therefore, you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge others. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, are doing the same things. You say, we know that God's judgment on those who do such things is in accordance with the truth. Do you imagine, whoever you are, that when you judge those who do such things, and yet do them yourself, you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience? Do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But by your hand, hard and impertinent hearts, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. For he will repay according to each one's deeds to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. While for those who are self-seeking and, and obey not the truth but wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be anguish and distress for everyone who does evil, the Jew first and also for the Greek, but glory and honour and peace for everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek. For God shows no partiality. All have sinned, apart from the law, will perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, these, though not having the law, are a law to themselves. They show that what the law requires is written in their hearts to which their own conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse or perhaps excuse them on the day, when according to my gospel, God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. Here's quite a deep statement that God's law, the things we need to do, are written on the hearts of every man. Everyone has a conscience and everyone knows what's right and wrong. And therefore, uh, we are without excuse when we sin, because whether we have the written law or not, we know what God has us to do. Our conscience is God-given. It is God's law written on our hearts. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think of those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.